I have to say some very reckless things tonight. And so I want to make it absolutely clear that I am talking for myself. I am not, I might be at other platforms and other occasions, more or less representing this or that organization or this or that committee. But tonight, I am talking to you as Jimmy Baldwin, who was born in Harlem 39 years ago, who has a certain responsibility to the people that produced him. That is all of you. And I'm speaking to you, if I may say so, not as an organizer and not as a Negro leader and not as a public figure, not as any of those things, but as one of the poets that you produced. A few days ago, it was suggested by some of us as forcefully as we knew how that in order for the country to be unable to ignore and to forget the slaughter of six children in an American city and in order to join the issue and bring the battle to where the battle really is, that is to say, to strike at the economic structure, that no one, black or white, should buy any presents for Christmas. I think that we should spell this out perhaps a little more precisely. I mean, and now I'm speaking for myself, that in this Christian nation, Christmas is mainly, as indeed are most churches, a commercial endeavor, having nothing whatever to do with the birth or the death of Christ. That if one begins to serve notice, ultimately on the banks, that we, the citizens of this country, do not consider that we have the right to celebrate Christmas this year, and that furthermore, we will use every weapon in our power to force this on the attention of the American Republic, which unluckily, I have to say, has its conscience mainly in its po pocketbook, I believe that we will begin to see some notion of our potential power. Let me put it this way. Before this country was established, when the country was being established, and this apart from what one's textbooks say, and in contradistinction to the television myths about the building, the discovery of America, the people who came to America, as it turns out, were neither heroes, saints, nor pilgrims. They were simply people who couldn't make it where they were. And that is why they came. They came here to make, as we like to say, a better life for themselves and their children. And as it turned out, and as it always does indeed turn out, what they meant by a better life for themselves and their children was the opportunity to make more money and oppress somebody else. <laughs> Which is what they did. The Indians have vanished, except for those we have under protective custody. And in order to build the country, it was necessary to find a source of cheap labor. And therefore, 400 years later, I represent the only man who never wanted to come here. But if I had not come, 
under the double coercion of the Bible and the gun, I very much doubt that we would have all those railroads and cotton would never have become king and in short the American economy would be at best a very different matter. Now if we had the economic weight to line the track and dam the rivers and hold the cotton and also raise the children, we can now use that weight for the first time for ourselves and for the liberation of this country.